Hello viewers, Gaming Spectre 4700 here. Now this is the first YouTube video that I'm doing, so hopefully it turns out well. Now one thing that you should know about me is that I really like video games a lot. Heck, I started playing when I was around 3 or 4, although I wasn't good at the time considering that I was 3 or 4. So... Now considering that I'm still a teenager in high school, I haven't been around for the old game releases, such as um, the NES, or the SNES, or the N64, the GameCube, or the Game Boy, or whatever. That doesn't mean I haven't played them. In fact, I like them quite a lot. More specifically, the for the GameCube games, um, uh, I, pl I played and still play a bunch of GameCube games. For the Game Boy, mainly Pokemon. I am a huge, huge fan of Pokemon. In fact, there's probably Pokemon music playing right now in the background, and I have two Pokemon posters behind me, one of Jigglypuff, one of um, uh, Primal Ga Groudon and Primal Kyogre. So for GameCube games, I, I played and still play a lot of those. Now, there are a lot of GameCube games out there, and I'm here to tell you my personal favorite top 10 GameCube games. Why 8, you may ask? Because 10 is too much of a number, and 5 is too little. So, here we go! Top 8 GameCube games! Now, while I have never watched the TV series of Cubix, Robots for Everyone, in fact, I didn't even know they had a TV show until I looked up a bit of extra info concerning the game. I have read a small children's book on it, and obviously played this game. I was just hanging out at a friend's house playing Soul Calibur 2, and after we were bored at playing that, he asked if we could play this. I didn't know what it was, so I just said sure. We took turns playing through the single player campaign, and I thought it was incredible. The story centers around a boy named Connor who just moved into Bubble Town, a town where almost everyone has a robot made by the nunk company Robix. In order to get a job at the local repair shop, The Bodies Pit, he has to fix a robot named Cubix, or else he will be kicked out of a group of kids that don't like him. Okay, that last part isn't true, but it just seems like a weird way to join a group of friends. I mean, I mean, if, if, even if it is a job, just to join a group of friends, like, Hey, you either do this or you can't be part of our group. I mean, I know it's for a job, but it just seems... No. No. Anyways, Evil Dr. K has accidentally released Solex, an alien energy source that sometimes causes robots to go berserk, and it makes a bunch of robots go berserk. And you have to fix them. I mentioned earlier that I loved Pokemon. Well, one of the reasons I like this game is because it's like Pokemon. You have to battle with the robots to fix them and get them on your team, and in battle there are different types with weaknesses, cards that can grant you bonuses, and to attack, you have to spin a wheel on the right place to attack. It's more like the card game now that I actually think about it. Now you actually have to catch them all in order to proceed. However, this game gets number 8 because the animations are... Well... Yeah... Sure, Dad. Hey, with Cubix's help, we'll have everything done in no time. Where's Cubix, anyway? He was hanging around me this morning, messing... I mean, helping with the unpacking. Yeah. But, other than that, the gameplay is good, the music is upbeat and gives the environment a futuristic feel, and the idea is great altogether. I can't tell you how many times me and my friends stayed up playing this when I spent the night over there. Good memories. Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg This was a fun one for me, even though I played the full game only a few years ago. I say full game because I had this GameCube preview disc with four game demos on it. The games were Beautiful Joe, Splinter Cell, Sonic DX Adventure Director's Cut, and of course, Billy Hatcher. Back then I liked playing the Sonic part the most, the other three I ignored a lot of time. Until I decided to try Beautiful Joe, I didn't get it. Not even a little. Maybe it was the fact that I was about 9 at the time, but I don't care. I eventually tried Billy Hatcher's demo, and when I did, my first thought was, this is fun. 
Sure, the game is tuned to a somewhat young audience, but that doesn't mean it's not fun to play. It's about a young boy named Billy Hatcher who was sent to Morning Land to save from Perpetual Night because he displayed great courage. The gameplay is fun, taking eggs and rolling over enemies just like Mario jumps on Goombas. After you get enough fruit by finding it on the ground and rolling over enemies, I don't know why undigested fruit is inside them, but we shouldn't question video game logic. You can hatch it and either get an animal, an item, or nothing. I cannot tell you how many times I grew an egg hoping to get something, but getting nothing. Anyways, overall the music is fun and upbeat, the game mechanics are making you roll on an egg whenever you want to do something, and the animations are three times better than Cubic's. Pokemon Coliseum. I might have put Gale of Darkness on, but I haven't played it. One extra thing to add to my Pokemon bucket list. This puts a new spin on Pokemon, because instead of collecting badges, you collect Shadow Pokemon. For those of you who don't know what the game is, you play as the character Wes, a Pokemon trainer who was kicked out of an evil organization known as Team Snagum for doing this. One of the reasons this is a fun game is that you don't play the hero who is quote-unquote destined to save the world. Well, not entirely. Wes is just someone who kinda got mixed up in things accidentally, but decides to help out of the pure goodness of his golden heart. One of the reasons I like this game is because it's permanently in double battle format, for whatever reason, and that opens up a lot of opportunities for different strategies. There is a reason the current Pokemon World Championships is double battle format, you know? The plot of this game is that, armed with your trusty snag machine, you stole right before doing... You need to snag all of the Shadow Pokemon from Cypher, an evil organization who's trying to make money by putting trainers with Shadow Pokemon in battles at a special coliseum. And the leader is the chubby mayor. You know, if they made a butler for the mayor, it could have easily been him. Super Mario Sunshine is, in my opinion, one of the best Mario games to date, beaten only by Super Mario Maker. But we're not doing Wii U games, that's for a later episode. Anyways, this cleanup game is great because it brings a new mechanic to the Mario universe. The Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dowsing Device, or as most people know him, Flood. He not only functions as a pump, but also a jetpack, a sort of water ski, and a rocket. And as an opponent, the Magic Graffiti Paintbrush that doesn't have an acronym! Wielded by Shadow Mario, or as we soon find out, Bowser Jr. Oh, hold on, I should've put a spoiler alert. Sorry. The entire island is polluted by a magical graffiti, and since Bowser Jr. was going around impersonating Mario, the real Mario has to clean up his mess, all because the shine sprites vanish with some paint. Game logic, you win again. The music has a tropical feel to it, and that makes it all the more better. The last thing I'll talk about is the bonus classic Mario levels. At least once in a few locations, Shadow Mario comes and takes blood away for a short time, and Mario has to clear a classic Mario level on his own, with remixed acapella Mario music playing in the background. Sonic Adventure to Battle Even though I'm pretty sure by now that's called Adventure Battle 2, former sounds cooler in my opinion. I'm just gonna start with the music. Just listen to the first song you hear during level 1 of the hero side. Also, notice how I said hero side. Yeah, there are two sides, a hero side and a dark side, for different parts of the storyline. I personally like to go the dark path, mostly because it delves deeper into Shadow the Hedgehog's backstory more. Ah, Shadow. Such an interesting character, so much character development. I could possibly make an entire episode on him at a later date, and I might. The science experiment whose only friend was killed decides to exact revenge on the world by using Eggman as a simple pawn.
At first, I didn't really want to play Pikmin, seeing it was a game my brother got. But after a few months, or a year, I don't keep that much track of time, I gave it a try, and it was really fun. What made the game fun was the fact that you were a space explorer Captain Armar, stranded on an unknown planet, trying to survive and repair your spaceship in 30 days. Then he finds the lovable but violent Pikmin, and then you find that it is possible to repair your ship in a few short weeks. What makes it fun is that alone, the Pikmin are pretty much useless, but as a group, they are a force to be reckoned with. Taking down huge enemies with the flowers on their heads or carrying huge ship parts that you couldn't even lift. Then there are the enemies. I will admit, up until I was 13, enemies in the game scared me, for whatever reason. So much, I wouldn't fight them. I guess I just had a fear of losing. But looking back on it, the enemies were well designed and really cool. Specifically, the armored cannon beetle and beady long legs even though he was the one that scared me the most. The music and the levels are pretty peaceful. Sometimes I just like to spend the entire game day populating Pikmin while listening to this calming music. Zelda is my second favorite video game franchise ever, bested only by Pokemon. And while most people say the crown jewel is Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, the crown jewel for me is The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. The cell shading graphics is one of my favorite parts of the entire game. Sure, it makes it look cartoony, but I've seen some artwork that really makes Toon Link look really cool. The music, especially the main theme and the ocean theme, really give me a sense of adventure. The bosses were really fun to fight, my favorite being the Helmarok King. There was just something so satisfying about hitting the bird in the face when it's the source of all the problems you had in the game, like him kidnapping your sister. It also has one of my favorite LOZ characters, Makar. There's something just so adorable about him, and he plays the viola. Not a violin, a viola. There is a difference. In fact, when I heard a song for the Deku Tree, I really liked it. I also like ancient legends found in video games, and Wind Waker held a lot from its predecessor in the timeline, Ocarina of Time. Speaking of which, the song, The Legendary Hero, is one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. Sure, I did a few side quests, but for some games, I don't really do it because I really want to continue the main story. That's just one of the things I like most about this game, the story. In fact, in all the, w in all the games I like, the main way I judge them is the nostalgia, the mechanics, and the story. In fact, this game would be number one if not for the game I played all the time. Now, before we move on to number one, I'd like to name some honorable mentions. A lot of people think that Smash Brothers Melee is the best in the series, and I agree with them. I remember back where I used to live, me and my older brother would go over to a friend's house, actually everyone in the family was our friends, about three other kids, and we would exchange Neopet cards, 10 points to whoever knows what those are, and afterwards we would sit around the TV and play some Melee. My main in that game was Pichu. I know what some of you are thinking, Pichu? He's like the weakest character in the game. Haha, <laughs> well guess what? I happen to be really good with Pichu. I may not have won every match, but I did win a bunch of them. So, there. In fact, right before we moved away, another friend of ours gave us his GameCube along with Melee. That was one of the best gifts we have ever gotten. In fact, I still own it. I remember the first year we moved here. Near the end of school in the second grade, all I thought about was getting home, turning on the GameCube, and playing Adventure Mode. Some really good music is from that game too like Smash's Brinstar Remix, or the Pokemon theme in Pokemon Stadium, or the theme for just the main title that's playing right now. So there you have it. Those are my top 8 GameCube games. Did you like this video? What are your favorite GameCube games? Do you have any suggestions for any videos I could do in the future? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're interested. It would really mean a lot to me. Well, goodbye.